Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's now time for my latest favourites video, this time looking back at March 2019, which was quite possibly my busiest month in London to date because there was a lot going on. I had a lot of exciting opportunities, I got to go to some disability related events and some theatre shows and quite a few museums and so there's quite a lot to tell you about. Um, some things I got gifted or paid or promoted as a thank you for attending so um, I will declare those as I go along, but in all cases, all opinions are my own. As always, nobody ever pays me to do a positive review or anything like that. So these are all my honest opinions. These are just things I want to tell you about because I, I did them. And yeah, there's just a lot to cover, so I'm not going to ramble on with this intro. I'm just going to crack straight on with it, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'll start off with the most notable event of the month, which was NADEX. This is Europe's largest event dedicated to disability and independent living. So it has all sorts of products and services for all sorts of disabilities and access needs, basically. It's a huge, huge exhibition. This is the second year in a row that I've been there. It's also the second year running that I've been a social media ambassador for them, which basically means we just plug each other on social media. We just give each other a mention. That's it. There's no payments or gifts changing hands at all. Um, I have to pay my own expenses to go to the show still. So I was happy to do that because it was very interesting last year and this year was again no exception. It's just an amazing show to go to to explore everything that's on offer. My favourite part of it this year was a talk by Warwick Davis, um, the actor who's been in Harry Potter and Star Wars and various other things. Um, he's such a nice guy and his talk was so inspirational and motivational and it was really interesting to hear about his life and his experiences and you know some of his um, encounters with more famous people as well. So yeah, it was a really wide-ranging talk. He asked a lot of questions from the audience as well. Their natural curiosity, kids are like big sponges, they're just kind of curious and if something doesn't fit in, immediately they hone on to it. So you've basically got an adult, a dad, as they might term it, who's the height of them. I mean, that just freaks them out. They're like, well, it doesn't compute. So they have to then react to that. And sometimes, unfortunately, the reaction is pointing and laughing. Sometimes it's, mum, mum, look at that, look at that, that little funny man, or whatever. And then the worst thing that happens then is the parent will chastise the child. They get a clip round the ear, as my dad would say, or they get a, they dragged off round the end of the aisle, so, you know, I'm no longer in sight. Because the parent's embarrassed. What I would try and do at that point is instigate a conversation. Hiya, how's it going? Because the sooner that child can then engage with you and ask the questions, then it's cool. It's like, all right then, see you later. But what's good about that is the rest of their lives now hopefully will be influenced by that moment. So in other words, they'll see somebody with dwarfism, somebody with a disability, and it normalises it, as opposed to it being, well, last time I saw somebody different, I, I got told off, and it, there's a negative experience out of it where I want to make it a positive, because that's, that's the future, that's how we change society, to make these experiences positive. Nadex is great for talks like that. You know, they have various people from all different professions and walks of life. So there's, again, something for everybody there in the talks. And there's panel sessions as well you can go to. So you have to kind of plan your day a bit if you want to you know, see some of these talks going on while you're looking around the exhibition as well. But Warwick Davis was really, really good. And someone has posted a video uh, online of his talk, which I will post a link to in the description because it's really well worth watching. In terms of other things I saw, um, there was the uh, Sunu Band and the Bower Cane and Cyber Eyes and the Orcam. They're all gadgets for visually impaired people. Um, and then there was Accessible, which is an app that looks at the accessibility of all sorts of venues. And there's the Transreport Passenger Assistance app that's coming out for the railways later this year. There's a special mouse called the Handshoe Mouse that puts your hand in a more comfortable position when you're using a computer. There were various um, publications there, like Able Magazine and Posability Magazine and Enable Magazine. 
and ability needs and disability horizons. And then there was Scope and UCAN, which are disability communities. I mean, everybody knows about Scope, I think, in the UK. And UCAN are becoming very well known as well. I've written a few articles for them in the past. And then I spoke to various sports and fitness companies and technology companies and holiday firms. And there's just so much going on there. So, you know, I rushed through a list there, but I've made a very detailed blog post about everything I've looked at. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Do go and check it out and yeah, just have a look at everything that I saw. And there are some links to other people's reviews as well within that post. Because I got to meet a couple of bloggers as well. Um, it's worth saying hello to Chloe Tear, for instance. Um, she was great to meet. And Carrie Ann Lightly, who works with Accessible. So it's great to meet her. And I nearly met Emma from Rock for Disability. Um, we had been hoping to bump into each other, but just didn't quite cross paths, even though we were kind of within feet of each other at one point. And I know Shona Louise was also there. So there was quite a lot of bloggers there. It was nice to be able to meet a couple of them. So, yeah, it was a very busy and eventful day. I'm very glad I went again, and I can definitely recommend going if you want to check out something like that. It takes place at the Birmingham NEC for two days every year, and it's completely free to attend. And the dates for next year are the 17th and 18th of March, if you want to put that in your diary. So yeah, I encourage you to go if you fancy checking it out. It's well worth a visit, at least once, for sure. Yeah, I'm thrilled the way it worked out. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with everything. You know, and people say to me often, if you could live life again and be average height, not have the, the disability and the pain and all of the other stuff that goes along with it, would you do, would you do it different? And I said, no, I wouldn't, because I think all of those things... They, they make you who you are. And I'm very happy with who I am. I wouldn't be this person if I wasn't this height. So all of this, all of your physical makeup informs the, the person you become. And so I, yeah, I wouldn't change it. And my wife's the same, even though, you know, due to, to, to illness and her condition, she, she no longer can, can walk very well. She wouldn't change it. You know, and I probably, if I spoke to a lot of you in this room, you, you probably would go, no. This is who I am and I'm proud of that and that's the way I would live life again. And then the other exhibition I went to was the Transport for London Access All Areas exhibition, which, as the name suggests, is all about accessibility on transport in the city. So you've got all the usual things represented, like the tube and the various other rail services and the buses, the taxis, the ferry services, the cable car, the Emirates Airline, as they call it. So they are all represented and the services that they were providing for disabled people were mentioned, such as turn up and go on the tube where you can just turn up at the gate line and ask for help and someone will make sure you get from one end of your journey to the other, radioing ahead to you know the other stations that you're going to. Then there are also various things like apps as well there, such as the accessible app, they were there as well. And the Wayfinder system that's being developed using Bluetooth beacons to help you navigate around stations, that's still being kind of tested at the moment. And then there was also various other support services and consultation groups as well. So there's lots of interesting things there. I also got to meet my friends from London Vision. Um, it was nice to see a couple of people from there. And I also met the RNIB and Guide Dogs. And uh, there was a couple of friends from the Anna Ridger Network that I explored the exhibition with as well. So it was a really interesting day and it was nice to meet so many people and find out so many interesting things. Again, I've made a big blog post all about this with links to everything that I discovered and a few details about various things that I found out. So go and check out the blog post. I'll link it in the description below and you can see everything that I found there. Another big event during the month was Disabled Access Day, um, which promotes accessible experiences for disabled people at venues and attractions all over the UK. Various places put on special events for it. I actually had the privilege of doing two guest posts for this day, which was uh, very cool of people to ask me. Uh, London Vision, my friends there, invited me to do a post for their website. Um, so I wrote about being a culture vulture in London and going to the theatre and museums and stuff like that. And then I wrote specifically about theatre for The Old Vic, which is a very famous theatre in London. They invited me and a few other bloggers to write guest posts on their site, um, because they're currently doing big renovations to their venue to make it more accessible. So they wanted to take the opportunity for Disabled Access Day to you know, hear about other people's experiences as well. So I wrote about you know, using audio description and touch tours and how it's opened up you know, a whole new world for me of theatre that I would never have accessed before. So it's a great honour to write for them. It's lovely to be featured there. So I'll put links to both of those posts in the description. And then I also took part in one of these special events on the day itself because I went on a guided tour of St Paul's Cathedral with a group of other people. There are a few tours going on that day, in fact. I know at least one other blogger was also there that day. So it was very, very popular. 
And rightly so, because it's a stunning building. There are so many beautiful things to look at in there. And the fact that it was a touch tour meant we could actually get hands on with a lot of things. You know, everything from like doors and walls and items on the floor to memorials and statues and things like that. There was so much to explore there. And I know we only scratched the surface, even though we looked at quite a lot. You know, there's so much in that building that it'd be nice to go on more tours again in the future as well. But it really was beautiful. We did cover a lot. Um, I've listed in my blog post the various things that we did get to look at. So go and check that out. It was really, really well done. And yeah, I can just recommend that people visit because it is just a beautiful place. And then the other big disability event I went on was a comedy night, um, which is a bit of a change from all the other things I've mentioned. This was put on by the charity Leonard Cheshire to do some fundraising, as they often do fundraising events but this was the first time they'd done a comedy night so they very kindly gave me complimentary tickets to go along and review it which was very very generous of them and it was genuinely a great show you know I'm not just saying that because they gave me tickets it was actually a very very good show because they had a very diverse lineup of comedians from different backgrounds with different styles of comedy so it never got boring they're all very funny in their own way the most significant and the headline act was Tim Renkow he's got cerebral palsy and is the star of the sitcom Jerk on BBC3 and he was very very good very very funny he's got a very naughty mischievous sense of humour and yeah he was very very good Emily Lloyd Saney the host was also very good at being the compare for the evening as well as doing her own stand up material as well she held everything together very very nicely and yeah all the comedians were great we had impressionists in there as well as um, stand up comedians telling stories so it was a nice mixture and there was a raffle as well for people to take part in which is obviously part of the fundraising and yeah it was just a really fun light hearted night there was no trouble no heckling nothing like that it was really respectful really good fun everyone had a good laugh as you would hope for from a comedy night so yeah I'm glad it went so well and I hope they do more comedy nights like that because that one worked very very well and you can see a detailed review of the night in my blog there's a, a blog post dedicated to that so go and check that out and then moving on from a comedy show to theatre shows. I went to the theatre three times this month, which was uh, quite good. Uh, I went with my girlfriend Claire on all occasions, and on all three shows we had touch tours and audio description, which are wonderful and useful as always. So the first show I saw was The American Clock, The Old Vic. The Old Vic very kindly gave me complimentary tickets to this show as a thank you for the Disabled Access Day post I wrote for them. So we went along to that and we had a lovely time on the Touch Tour. We got to uh, meet members of the cast, including the guy who plays the main narrator at the centre of the story, uh, Sol Remy, and Francesca Mills, who is a disabled actress. She plays about seven roles in the show. She was an absolute delight to chat to as well, really enthusiastic about the show. And yeah, it was really interesting to look around the set as per usual. They had a fake grand piano there and a homemade radio and an old style telephone and a living room armchair and things like that because the play is set during the Great Depression. So it's quite old, a lot of the stuff there. But the play actually progresses then through the years and the decades beyond that. It's kind of showing the impact that the Great Depression had. It was very well produced. You know, It had uh, great acting from everyone involved. There was good music in there and some dancing as well. And in order to acknowledge that it affected people you know, of all backgrounds, races, cultures, etc., the main family at the centre of the story was actually played by three different sets of people, you know, all of different races. So at some points you had you know, all three variants of the family on stage at the same time, which sounds confusing, having you know three different lots of people playing the same characters, but it actually worked pretty well and it actually had the desired effect. So it was very well produced, that said, I didn't really kind of connect with it. I didn't really kind of feel any kind of emotions for the characters as such. It didn't really resonate deeply. You know, there are aspects of the play that relate to the world today, without a doubt. But it was just really long and padded out. I think that was the issue with it. It could have been a lot kind of shorter and tighter. There were kind of characters and scenes in there that didn't really feel that they added anything. And actually the ending actually felt a bit rushed. Um, certainly a big significant part of the ending felt quite rushed. But as I say, it was very well produced and acted. There's no um, denying that. It just could have been shorter. If it had been shorter and tighter, maybe I would have been more favourable. But 
yeah, it definitely works well for some people that play. It's a little bit divisive, I think, the production. But it was definitely well worth going. I'm very glad I went. I mean, yes, the tickets were free, but you know, even if they hadn't been, it would have still been tempting to pay for it and try it out because it was getting very good reviews and it was definitely worth a go. It did make you think, and you know, as I say, it was very well made. So it just wasn't quite for me, that's all. Not every play can be. And then the next play we saw was Alice Always. This was at the Bridge Theatre, which is by Tower Bridge on the South Bank. Um, I'd never known about that theatre before, strangely, despite walking past that area many a time over the years. But then it is a bit kind of set back from the other buildings in the immediate area behind a kind of a big patch of grass. So it's a bit easy to miss if you're not looking for it. But it is a lovely venue inside. Um, Again, the touch tour was really good, and we got to say hello to pretty much all the members of the cast, I think, who all introduced themselves and told us about their characters before they had to go and get ready. Although one of the uh, ladies did actually stay on the stage and let us examine her policewoman's uniform, and we had a chat to her in general as well, so that was really nice of her to hang around to do that. And the stage itself was an interesting design. It's a thrust design, they call it, so it kind of stretches out into the auditorium and the audience kind of sit on three sides. So it creates a really large stage area and the back section of the stage can slide forward. So the um, journalist office is at the back of the stage, can kind of slide forward when it's kind of all set up with people on it. And there's gauze screens that come down to give like projected backdrops as well. And there was a kind of trapdoor thing in the front of the stage for lifting things up and down in and out of view during scene changes. And there was a little walkway around the edge of the stage as well. So it was quite cleverly designed and it was all very cleverly used. So it's nice to explore all the stage. And the play itself is very good. I mean, it's got a couple of big names in there. It's got Joanne Froggett uh, from Downton Abbey. She plays Anna Bates in that show. And Robert Lannister, who has starred in Spooks and Hustle as well as other things. So two big actors in that. And the play itself is really good. Um, it's all about a lady called Frances who comes across this accident in which a woman called Alice unfortunately passes away. But Frances kind of gets involved with Alice's family, who are much better off than her, because she leads a very simple life um, up to that point. But getting kind of in with this family gives her more prestige among her journalist colleagues. And things just kind of evolve from there as she gets involved with them. It's a really interesting play. There's a lot of psychology in there. There's a few twists in there. And it was just really entertaining. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. So I can recommend that. It is a book as well, which I must read at some point. And the book is by Harriet Lane, so I'll try and check that out at some point. It is on Audible, so I've kind of bookmarked it on my wish list for uh, future listening because it's uh, going to be a really interesting book to listen to, to see how it compares to the play. So, yeah, I can recommend Alice always um, if you see it on anywhere. It's very, very good. And then the final play I saw during the month was called Flight Paths. This was at the Albany Theatre and was produced by a company called Extant who work with visually impaired performers. So the two uh, actresses who performed in the play were visually impaired, um, which actually meant that they were doing audio description as well because by the nature of the story, they were describing things to each other, which meant they were doing audio description towards the audience as well by design. So it was very cleverly integrated in that way. The story was basically about these two um, characters moving to the UK. They want to migrate to the UK and they want to demonstrate their talents in order to get a visa. And they are acrobats, basically, who perform on these silks that hang down from the ceiling. So the play kind of looks at them rehearsing together and getting to know each other with one showing the other you know, how to do a certain trick. And then at the end of the show, you get this entire performance, not just the moves they've been rehearsing, but an actual full-on performance from the silks hanging down from the ceiling, which was cool. It was very beautifully done. But then it wasn't just about them during the show as well. It was also interspersed with other recorded audio about blind performers in Japanese culture, which is an interesting story in and of itself and there were also recordings of two other characters that one of the girls had spoken to before about their experiences of blindness and migration so they were played in at appropriate points during the show and all these threads all came together nicely and gave a nice rounded picture and they kind of made you think and yeah it was really good the whole thing was really well put together and the girls at the center of the show the two ladies uh, were very good actors and very good acrobats so yeah that was very very good so moving on to museums, I went to quite a few during the month for various exhibitions and tours, so I'll quickly go through those. Uh, the first is the Postal Museum, where they're now doing audio-described tours every so often, which is fantastic. So we got descriptions of various items throughout the exhibition, and we got to touch and handle various things too, which was cool. The museum, as the name suggests, is about the history of the postal service in the UK, so it takes you through how mail was 
processed and delivered in olden times right through to the modern day. And it's really interesting to see how things kind of evolved and changed over the years. And we also got to ride on the mail rail as well, which is the underground line that delivered mail between the sorting offices in central London for a while. So that was very cool. You know, it was designed for packages, not people, but I was still able to fit on there despite being six foot one. So that was a fun ride. There's an audio commentary as it goes along and there's some projected film footage and graphics as you go along on the walls. So that's pretty good. If you need audio description, then there is also a separate film you can watch in a separate room where they show you some of the footage from the ride with audio description. So it is still possible to see it and hear it in another way, which is great. So yeah, I can highly recommend the museum. It's very, very interesting, perhaps more so than you might think, given the name. You might think post is quite a boring thing to find out about, but it is actually very, very interesting, and it's something we very much take for granted. I have also done a review for Vocalize for their website. So you won't find this on my blog. You'll find it on the Vocalize site. But I have, of course, put a link in the blog post and I'll put a link in the description as well. So it was great to do a a guest post for them because I use Vocalize a lot when I go to theatres and museums because they are responsible for a lot of the audio description in those places. So, yeah, it was great to be able to give them something back for all they've done for me, really, since I've uh, moved to the city. And then I also went on a tour of Tower Bridge with my friends from London Vision South East. That was really cool because it's such an iconic structure, such a beautiful building. And it's such an impressive piece of engineering that it's really fascinating to just explore the whole space inside there. The exhibition spaces tell you about the history and the construction and the engineering that goes on in the bridge. But you can also see the engine rooms as well, which are really cool. And you've got the upper walkways where you get an amazing view along the river and also through the glass floors as well, where you can see the traffic and the road and the people and the river below you. So it's really, really great in there. I can highly recommend going. I've posted some video footage on my channel so you can get a sense of what we looked at. And there are some links to photos on Instagram as well in my blog post. So yeah, go and check all that out. And I can highly recommend going because it's one of those things that we all take for granted is just being there as one of the big features of London. But to go in there and really fully understand it is very, very cool. And then on my own, I also went to the old Royal Naval College in Greenwich to look at their painted hall. They've recently restored the painted ceiling in there, so they had a big reopening weekend. And I won free tickets to go and see that in an evening standard competition, which was very cool. So I went along quite gladly, and it is stunning in there. You know, it's basically three halls together, like two small ones at each end and a really long hall in the middle. And the long hall has got this huge ceiling with artwork all over it. It's one huge artwork. It's so detailed and so ornate and so beautiful. And you can lay back on the benches and look up at it. And I was able to use my monocular to see a lot of the detail. And I took lots of photos as well that I was able to look at later and pick out even more details. And then the halls at each end as well are also very ornate and detailed as well, especially the smaller hall at the far end where they've got great big artwork on the wall as well that's also very, very beautiful. Um, So there's a lot to look at in there. I spent a good couple of hours or so just looking at all that stuff. There is a digital guide um, which tells you all about it and helpfully kind of zooms in on some of the details as it's talking about them. So you are actually able to hone in with your own eyes and look at the various bits and pieces because you now know what you're looking for. So it's really interesting to learn about you know what it all means and everything, put it all in context. Unfortunately, they didn't have the audio described guide available. This is why I used the standard digital guide and thankfully I had enough vision to do so. I did ask about the audio described guide um, because it had been produced with the help of Vocalize and they had said it was there, but unfortunately the information hadn't been cascaded down to the staff on the ground, it seemed, on that day. So they weren't able to provide it because they didn't know about it. To their credit, the college have apologised and given me uh, complimentary tickets to go back because they have now made sure all staff are informed. So I will be going back to give it a go at some point. And thank you to them for that, for sorting it out. That's really, really good of them. When I do go along and try it out, yeah, I'll obviously refer to it in another favourites video and let you know how I get on with it. But yeah, it is a stunning place to go to. It is well worth a visit. You can't fail to be impressed by it, to be honest. And then I also went to an event at the British Museum, which was interesting because I was actually paid to attend as a helper rather than just going as a visitor. So I was actually assisting with this in an official capacity. It was called Access All Senses and it was part of the Friday Lates event at the British Museum. 
and it was showing able-bodied and disabled people alike uh, the benefits of audio description and touch tours and British Sign Language for enhancing exhibitions and making them more accessible. Because audio description and touch tours can benefit everybody, really, because you know there's a lot of detail in exhibitions that you might miss or not understand fully. So being able to hear about things and to actually be able to get up close and touch them, as you can with some of these items in the Parthenon rooms, is really, really useful. And it was really cool to be able to demonstrate that to members of the public, because because it really did open their eyes, so to speak, to the benefits of it. They were really interested to hear about how it benefited me, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm really glad I was able to do that. I was there with my friend Rafi Cecilia, who has been studying accessible technology used by visually impaired people at museums as part of a PhD. So it was great to be able to meet her again. And, yeah, it was just great to demonstrate things like that to the public, just to really show why it's so useful to me. It was nice to kind of come at it from a different angle for a change. And then with my girlfriend Claire, I went to the Science Museum and we had a look at the exhibition all about the sun using their large print guide to help us uh, read everything. And that was really interesting. It's another of those things that you take for granted is just being there in your daily life. But it's really fascinating to find out all about it. You know, there's obviously its chemical composition, you know, how it actually operates. And then, you know, we've used it to tell the time. We've discovered its health benefits and dangers. We've harnessed solar power. We've even tried to, you know, create replica suns on Earth using nuclear fusion. And, you know, the exhibition goes through all that and more. It's just really, really interesting. And it does close on the 6th of May. So, you know, you might not be able to go there by the time you see this. But, yeah, it was really well worth looking around because it is just fascinating. I mean, space in itself is just really, really interesting. And, you know, the sun is the central part of our solar system. So we rely on it for life. And it's just amazing to find out about it all. And then my girlfriend and I also went for a private dinner with a couple of friends of ours, which I wouldn't normally mention, but I think the event is something that will interest some people in the London area, and because this was the Tube Train Supper Club um, at the Walthamstow Pump House Museum. They have an old London Underground train, an old Victoria Line train, I think it is, and you can sit in there and have dinner because this supper club company come in and do a dinner there on a regular basis. They've been doing it for a while now. And yeah, they put on a lovely meal. It's got like a Latin American feel to it, the menu. And it's made up of quite a few courses. There's like a starter and a fish course and a meat course and a dessert and a sorbet course as well. And yeah, it's a few little courses in between, like the bigger courses, basically. And it was just really, really nice. I mean, you know, the chef explains, you know, the meal they're cooking for you and they come around and check you're happy with it and they can accommodate, you know, dietary requirements if they need to. And it was just a really kind of unique and special occasion. So yeah, if you look up the Tube Train Tupper Club and look at the menu they've got there, it's worth checking out if you want something a bit different, you know, what you want to eat somewhere a bit different, you know, with your friends, it's it's lovely. And being able to sit in, you know, an old tube train carriage, you know, on the actual seats that they've got in there, you know, they've still got the original seating and stuff. It's good fun. It was really nice. We enjoyed that. And then finally, just to mention a couple of pieces of entertainment that I've enjoyed watching as well. On YouTube, I've been enjoying All the Stations Ireland. Um, I've mentioned All the Stations before, and some of you may well be familiar with it. Um, but basically, YouTubers Jeff Marshall and Vicky Pipe, back in 2017, travelled to all the stations on the UK's railway network. And they'd made a online documentary about it which was really interesting because it's not just about train spotting and stuff they're not train spotters um, they actually explore the areas around many of the stations as well as exploring the stations themselves and it's just a great tour of the country there's you know it's beautiful scenery there's meet lots of interesting people learn about some of the history of the railways and there's lots of you know good humor and banter in there as well so the 2017 uk series was great and then now they've done an Ireland tour as well, travelling to all the stations in Ireland over a couple of weeks. And again, that was really interesting, really good fun to watch. And the soundtrack is great as well. Um, Stephen Francis deserves a mention just for the theme tune, which he's released you know, a couple of EPs of now. That's really catchy. So yeah, it's a great series to watch. You know, If you like the idea of travelling, then go and watch it. Because like I said, it's not about train spotting. Yes, there are trains in it. But you know, it is all about the experience of using the railways and travelling to different parts of the country that you might never have been to before. And just seeing what's around. So it's really interesting. It's good fun. And then last, but by no means least, I've been binge-watching QI on DVD. Uh, because last year they released the first 13 series across four box sets on DVD, covering the entire Stephen Fry era. 
And it's been great to rewatch those episodes. It's taken me a while because we didn't have a DVD player when I bought them last year. I mean, I could have watched them on my computer, but I wanted to save them until we got a proper TV and a you know, new Blu-ray player and stuff. So now I have got a player, I can actually watch it properly on the TV. And it's been great to go through all those old episodes because I haven't seen a lot of them in ages. And it's much better than watching them on Dave with adverts and all this kind of stuff. So it's nice to be able to actually own them at last. They're always really interesting and funny with a great variety of guests and topics on there. And there are extra features as well on those box sets. You get deleted scenes and interviews and various other bits and pieces. The other great thing is, of course, that you get the XL episodes as well. So from the third episode of Series F, they started producing 45-minute extended editions as well. So you get those on here instead of the half hours when you get to that point, which is fantastic. And it's great to have the actual full episodes. So, yeah, I've been enjoying watching QI. It's been great to go through all that series again properly at long last. It's great to own them all. And that's it. We made it to the end of the video. Well done if you've watched this far. I know there was a lot there. But as I said at the beginning, this was a very busy month. So I had a lot I wanted to cover and to tell you about. So I hope you enjoyed watching through all of that. There's a very um, detailed post to go with this video and a few um, even more detailed posts about things like Nadex and the Access All Areas exhibition and the comedy night I went on and a few other reviews and guest posts I wrote. So go and check out my blog as well for even more detail. April, I have done a few interesting bits and pieces, but not quite as much as March. So my um, April favourites video will be considerably uh, shorter and a bit easier. And uh, May, there's a few bits going on as well um, that I've got planned. One very exciting thing, which if it pays off, is going to be quite interesting. And then, of course, I've got my speech at the Anaridia Network Conference in June, um, which I'm really looking forward to doing. So, yeah, there's various bits and pieces in the pipeline. There's always bits and pieces going on. That is it for this video, though. Thank you very much for making it this far. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you for another video very, very soon. Bye. We'll finish on that note, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Nadex. Thank you for listening and coming this morning. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very much. Appreciate it. Now to get off this table in a graceful manner, knowing that while I've been sat here, my legs have probably gone to sleep and I'll collapse the heat, but uh, here goes.